All right, so uh, this morning I woke up and I took, I was dropping my daughter off to a friend's place because I had to catch up this early morning flight. And she told me, hey, it looks like you are going for an important meeting. Are there going to be very important people? I said, yes. So she tells me, is the President of United States going to be there? <laughs> so I said, no. Then she said, how about the governor? I said, no. Then she said, oh, at least the mayor? And I said, no. And she said, oh, maybe all those people are still important to you. So to all of you important people, thanks for making to this uh, CloudStack collaboration conference. And uh, I'm glad we all are here. And I'm going to talk about the CloudStack releases. So first about me. So uh, before joining Citrix in late 2012, up until that, I have used a lot of open source software. But um, especially from Apache Foundation, uh, but mainly as a freeloader. So late 2012, when I got an opportunity to work with Citrix and on Apache Cloud Stack, I was thrilled because I thought this is my time to give back to the community and instead of freeloader, become a contributor. So here I am. I was a contributor for time, became committer, PMC member, and of course, uh, release management. But I have to tell you, the community is really such a vibrant place that uh, it, over the years, whatever I have reaped from using open source software, even though I have run two big releases, and that was a lot of hard work, but I don't think I can ever repay the debt, especially to the Apache Foundation. So with that, I want to start on release management. So release management, uh, of course, any release management begins with planning. And if you think about planning for Apache Cloud Stack releases, it's relatively very simple because we have four month time-based release cycle, right? So it becomes very simple to plan. You can pretty much come up with your feature freeze, code freeze, RCs and GA date uh, based on that four month time scale, right? But you also have to take into context where did the previous release was. And, and that's where we sometimes have some adjustments that we need to make. And uh, in release management, uh, we have a few milestones which I will cover. The first one is feature freeze. This is, this is pretty much the hard fix date by which all the features have to make into the master branch. And because on this day, the feature branch will be cut. So if your feature did not make in by this time, it's pretty much out and you have to wait for the next release cycle. And that's where communication becomes important. You have to uh, give sufficient notice for folks to be aware what time the release branch will be cut. If there are any challenges, uh, bring them forward, right? The next milestone we have is code freeze. So between the feature freeze and code freeze is what we do integration testing. And after code freeze, up until RC, what we allow is only blocker and critical issues to be fixed. The reason is we want to make sure that the branch is stable. And once the branch has been stable for some time, there are no blockers or criticals, then you call out for release, uh, release candidate. Now, one thing I want to call out for uh, in our releases, we have a lot of features, and we have a lot of issues that come in, and we do not have any auto assignment of issues. So what that means, as a release manager, you have to spend a lot of time triaging issues and figuring out who, whom can you ask to fix those issues. So in my personal opinion, uh, I know in 4.2, we did not even have the liberty to assign issues. So I had to always go outside and ask uh, in a, through another channel. And Jira being the most efficient, I was watching that we need to do that. Now, I think I'm getting a little greedy. And what I want to propose is we have a much more fine-grained uh, component and subcomponent levels for our uh, software modules, and we come up with primary owners or the owners that we can rotate across different releases and do auto assignment. That will actually take a lot of burden off any future release manager because it would take me almost every day two to three hours just triaging issues or even even more depending on depending on how the release is going, right? So once the release branch is stable and there are no more blocker, uh, the release manager builds the release candidate. And uh, 
Building a release candidate typically takes maybe one or two days. The reason being you want to make sure all the fixes that are expected to uh, are expected are there. So you have to do cherry picks that, ta that takes some time. Once you have done that, you call for a vote. And you have to have minimum 72 hours of vote. That's, that's pretty much in, with us, our bylaws also, and that must be followed. The community then tests the builds and then cast their votes. In order to pass a vote and publish a release, uh, only PMC votes are binding, and those are the ones that are counted. You need to have at least three plus one binding votes, and a majority of binding votes should be plus one rather than minus one. So releases cannot be vetoed unless it's like some very critical issue that you really need to fix, like upgrades are broken. It, ge it generally cannot be vetoed. And non-binding votes are welcome. We obviously want uh, a lot of participation in community, so we definitely welcome them, but they are not really counted in terms of uh, as part as voting process goes. If the vote fails, then the reason of failure gets addressed and a new RC built and the process is repeated. And we have to, unfortunately, repeat many times. <laughs> so that's something I will cover a little la uh, later in my slides also. And then once the final RC is done, everybody is happy with the release, we do a GA and the vote is officially published and the release is made, right? Now, in order to uh, really run releases, especially in open source community, because everybody is in different time zones, people are working in different hours, communication becomes very important. So it's really the key of running efficient releases. So as a release manager, you have to propose the release plan and milestones with sufficient notice so that people have due chance to correct their course in case they are not meeting a certain milestone or at least they can raise their, raise their doubts or challenges. You have to solicit feedback because obviously you cannot run the release alone. And uh, we use a variety of communication tools for managing releases. Uh, mailing list, this is the most obvious one. All of our communication happens on mailing list. If it did not happen on mailing list, pretty much it did not happen, right? So, uh, but we have a lot of, communic uh, lot of emails come per day. So as a release manager, it also becomes hard to uh, scan through all the emails and figure out what are the things that might affect the release or something that you need to look for. So the way we have uh, devised around it is always use a prefix in your subject line so that you can filter. And I have, I've, I've been pretty much using Outlook and it has like something called views, just like on database here views, I can set those views and, and quickly munch through emails, but it, it does take a lot of time. Then we have Wiki, Jira, and Dashboard, and other tools we use are Jenkins and Review Board, and Source Tree actually, Chip introduced me to it. Uh, this is pretty much a, a UI tool on top of your uh, Git repo and allows you to look at the commits that are coming in. It becomes uh, much helpful when you are doing your uh, cherry picks after our, during RCs. So now digging deeper into some of those communication tools, especially Wiki. So Wiki is our landing page, and this gives a snapshot information of where we are in, in the release. What's the schedule? Who are the volunteers? What's the status? Where are the feature and design documents? Where is the doc plan? Where is the test plan? An RC status, et cetera, right? So uh, Jira, I would say, for any, any release manager, that is the most important tool, because this is where all your bug databases, all your features and issues is, and you have to get comfortable with Jira query language. It's very close to SQL, but not exactly. And this is really the tool that you can use to find out answers to the questions that you're looking for, like who moved the, an issue out of this release into the future release when it should not have been. All those answers you can find by querying, querying Jira. It has pretty much updated date in certain range or whatever. It, it, is, it is very powerful. And um, once you set up your Jira, Jira queries, if you keep running them multiple times, and if you want to share it with others, you have to save it as a named filter. And then you have to share. And sharing by default is not enabled on Apache Infra. So you, whoever is running the release, they have to request this privilege. So I have set up a bunch of filters which allows me to have a quick glance of where the release is what things, who I'm, whom do I need to get something done or whatever, or, or where is the trend, are, are we aligned or not, right? So that's where I, set, I used to set up all my lots of queries. For any release, I think I have set at least 20 different Jira filters. And then 
you build a dashboard. So dashboard is pretty much uh, a, a view where you come in pretty much uh, every day, multiple times, and, and you create several widgets. Those widgets are really giving answers to the questions that you're looking for, and they are backed by the Jira filters. And each of those widgets is what uh, I, have, I have documented in the release plan, what are the filters that I've been using. And this is a snapshot of the release dashboard. Like, I would uh, encourage all of our uh, contributors to make this release dashboard as their landing page because I have a neat widget there for all the issues assigned to them. I'm not sure how many people were using it, but as soon as you come to that page, you will see who are, what are the issues assigned to you and all the different trends, how many bugs got created, resolved, and especially the unresolved, unassigned. This bucket is, is always, always challenging because I have to figure out whom, whom to assign, right? So these were uh, pretty much simple, uh, very simple mechanics on how we, how we run our releases. But it's not just that. Beyond the tool, tooling, the main thing is how people interact. And in release management, we have a lot of emotions. Everybody interacts with some, somebody else. They are contributing their code. Somebody is testing. So these are the emotions that really uh, builds a community. That is really something that we all need to strive that, uh, that we encourage that everybody is happy. And how do we do that? Those are the challenges that we have to figure out. So I, I was thinking through this, and I thought, how, sh how should I depict this? So the way I sorted it out was during the beginning of release, everybody is happy. Everybody is drinking coffee. And uh, all the feature contributors are happy that uh, they have good contribution. They're going to make, they'll be proud of their contribution. And release manager is happy setting up all those shiny dashboard widgets that I'm going to make it the perfect release. First RCGA, that's it. <laughs> so, um, so that's how it starts. As we approach feature freeze, this is where all the tension builds up because uh, people are anxious whether their feature would made, will make it to the, to the feature branch in time or not. And, uh, and like, for example, they have been testing in their release branch for a long time. It's time for them to merge it into master, and they pull in from master, and it turns out somebody else has changed something, and now they have to figure out what broke, and then, then fix it up. So this becomes really a, a, a crucial time for everybody. And for release manager also, because he's seeing all those issues coming in, and he has to, he has to stabilize them, right? So uh, after the feature freeze date, some guys are very happy, uh, relieved that their feature made in, and some might be disappointed and sad that the feature did not make in and will have to come for the next release. Uh, from feature freeze until code freeze, we are still drinking a lot of coffee, maybe even more, because there are a lot of issues that have, that have come in and people have, people have to fix them. And it's, it's the time they figure out, hey, during this integration, I did not expect this, or hey, th this scenario, I never thought through it. Maybe I have to refactor my code or, or make major changes, and that's gonna may affect some other areas. So this is, this is where we have a lot of activities. So once we are closer to release candidate, and I think this is where we have some challenge, what I feel was there was an apathy. Uh, everybody, or at least a lot of folks were checked out, and uh, they were happily left the building or whatever, drinking good coffee rather than, <laughs> rather than the common coffee. And this is what the release manager was left with. He's like a big pot all by himself, drinking coffee, making sure all the, all the RC candidates are going out, right? And this is what he really feels. What happened? Where are all these folks? Why did we not test earlier? Why are these things coming during RC? We had a whole big period of stabilization, and many of those issues are not coming up. And uh, we get people putting RCs multiple times. If you t check one time or maybe two times, you can probably avoid multiple respins. And then with every, every minus one, what happens, I, my observation was, as soon as a release candidate gets minus one, people avo uh, avoid that, that candidate. And then you just have to wait for another one, which causes multiple respins. And it felt sometimes like, am I the only one who wants to release? <laughs> so, so those are the things. But eventually, there are obviously some technical challenges as well as behavioral. But at the end of the day, uh, we all pull through it, and we are able to release. And people offer release manager free drinks. Dan, thank you, but <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> All right. 
So we talked about uh, sort of all the emotions that, that went through in running these releases. I also wanted to look back and ponder over the two releases that I was responsible for and see and compare and contrast and, and figure out what can we take away from that, all right? So ACS 4.2, this was the biggest release that we had, we had done. I did a lot of Jira, uh, Git and Jira analysis. And with ACS 4.2, we had like almost 5,000 commits. And part of that was 4.1, some of the features did not make to 4.1 by feature freeze, and they rolled into 4.2, and 4.2 became a pretty big release. And uh, we changed almost 690,000 lines of code, which is really, really huge. And if you look at all the bugs filed and fixed, there were like 2,200 bugs across all of those features, plus from prior releases that, that we had fixed, and the number of test cases that were added. And we were able to manage it in uh, six RCs. 4.3 I was expecting, given my experience with 4.2, which was a huge release, I was very confident it'll go out, but it took a long, long time. And it was almost one-sixth the, the size of the prior release, or let's say one-fifth or something, All right? So this is a drill down. So if I look at this chart here, this is the 4.2 feature development. 4.2 had actually a longer a development cycle of five months, we had actually delayed on 4.1, we had extended it, and as a result, master was open for a longer period. So we had like five months of development time, but you can see the test stabilization RCs. We had lots of issues that, uh, lots of commits and issues in the next graph that I'll talk about, but we were still able to manage. If we look at ACS 4.3, the feature development was four months, and the test stabilization RC cycles were very long, especially the stabilization cycle. My original plan for the RC was January 9th, and we took like January 22nd, so two weeks delayed. But then RCs really, really took us a long, long time. So if we go by our four months release cadence, it should have released by end of January, that was the plan. But we released like uh, March 25th, so almost two months later, so instead of a six, uh, instead of a four-month release cadence, we really took six months, right? So one, and, and the other thing, which, which is, has been bothering me for quite some time, and I wasn't sure how to put it up, but it's, it's a fact, and that's why I'm pointing it out, that when I look at the issues created, um, we have a lot of, I, I work for Citrix, but I'm, I'm gonna wear both hats in, in, this, in this presentation. When I look at it, I can see that a lot of QA activity is primarily being done by Citrix. And Citrix, wearing the Citrix hat, is a good citizen and wants to contribute in every way possible. But we have to reduce this dependency because that means Citrix QA schedule will start impacting Apache releases. And if, if I look at it, pretty much uh, community, non-Citrix community, uh, the issues filed were much less and they were also filed towards later in the cycle, right? That means the other folks are getting engaged in, in testing later in the cycle. And if I look at the test results and the test cases and plans, there are also a lot of those test cases are coming from Citrix and, and it's, part of it is obvious also because a lot of features were also getting contributed. But overall, I think we have, we have a challenge that we need to overcome and, uh, and so how, how do we go about it? And what happened here? That's a bummer. Why is this not showing up here? Okay. So we took five months since 4.3 feature freeze to GA with over two months in RC. And I talked about we have four month release cadence, but we took six. And if you just look at it, whatever it is, right, it seems like we need a longer QA cycle. There were issues that we've encountered during RC, uh, during RCs as well, as well as earlier. Why is it? Wow, I did. Wow, this is weird. <laughs> it's coming in random order. All right, guys, I have to, just, just give me a moment. I think I have to turn off the smart graphics.
Okay, I guess that's, that's the best way to go about it. All right. Okay. So uh, now we have over dependency on Citrix for the QA. Now this and Citrix QA, uh, my observation was uh, wearing the Citrix hat that they have been pretty much busy until the GA of current release. And as a result, they are not ready to test by code freeze. So what that means, for example, for 4.4, because the uh, ACS 4.3 was delayed as well as the Citrix Cloud Platform release came out uh, towards the end of March. And we had already achieved feature freeze because of obviously they, they were, things were available. But Citrix QA only got started on the release the first week of April. That means only like say like two months or so. And we have our, uh, our code freeze coming next week. So I have, so, so that, that is going to be our challenge. So to the next slide. So what can we really do about it? I had a neat animation, but I guess we'll, we'll live with this. So we have dependency on Citrix QA. That is uh, not changing in short term. So, so we, ha we have to uh, somehow adapt. And the only solution that we can, we can realistically do is increase our automation. And everybody knows uh, with CloudStack, such a big project, manual testing is definitely not enough and we have to invest on automation. And uh, Amog had done a presentation on, on basically replicable test design. So we, we want to enable uh, everybody in community to be able to replicate the test, uh, test design and replicate the test infrastructure design into their environments to enable them to test in, in, the, in their setup. And we also need to, uh, pretty much make sure that it's easy to add automation. So that's where I think a lot of our focus has to go in. And, uh, but automation is not something that you can uh, flip a switch that it would happen right away. It will take us time, right? So we have to take a pragmatic approach and figure out what can we do given the limitations we have, but still march towards adding a lot more automation. So if we go by this, what this means is that QA should, would need additional time in order to come up with test plans for the features that have been contributed and figure out what's the execution, set up that lab environment. That means they will not be ready by that time. So they need additional time to go through and figure out. And uh, what I was thinking was, given that it's, it's that, maybe we push out feature freeze. But the challenge with pushing out feature freeze is that the master branch remains open for a longer period. If it remains open for a longer period, that means more features could come in, and that would mean more testing needed, more change, and more bugs. So how do we address that? So one thought that came to my mind was, just like we have a very hard uh, feature freeze date, we need to have a, hard, a pretty much same hard feature proposal date. And that proposal date, typically, the way the chip had set out, and that's what I had followed was, four weeks prior to feature freeze used to be our feature proposal. And we definitely don't want more features to come in, right? So left shift the feature proposal date, move it, uh, let's say maybe push out the feature freeze, that means the release uh, is expanding, but left shift the feature proposal so that we still have the limited scope and we, we test those features in, in initial quality, obviously we have, we have covered that as well. That needs to be good, but it allows us to adapt in our plan, and we, we did not really meet the six or four month release cadence, right? So we have to figure out what, what can we do about it. Are we really able to achieve that? Or we adapt and see, and we come back and go for a, a four month, three month, or a shorter cycle when we have sufficient automation. Okay. And on 4.3, we had nine RCs. And when I looked at RCs and did an RC analysis, on an average, only four people participated in RCs. That's actually very limited. It's possible that other people were, were, uh, were engaged and they were testing, but they did not vote. But we, we don't know that, right? So that's still very limited engagement. And as I called out earlier, once an RC gets minus one, it's pretty much, uh, 
nobody wants to touch it. And <laughs> as a release manager, you have to pretty much re-spin, and that, that pretty much delays, delays the schedule. And after a few RCs, engagement really drops. And that's what I was seeing after, I think, first two RCs, generally, even for 4.2, there was not much engagement. RC 3, 4, people start engaging. They think, okay, it's getting stable. Let's, let's get in now. And after RC 5 or 6, pretty much, <laughs> it's done deal. People have written it off. So that's, that's the challenge we have to handle. And for that, we need engagement earlier in test cycle. And what I mean by that is not just manual testing. We have to sign up and we have to say, hey, this is the area that I'm going to test and I'm going to uh, publish the test results for this particular component. That way we have a formal, formal sign off, right? And we have to obviously increase automation coverage. One thought uh, that came in, uh, and actually David Nelly, he had started a thread on release cadence, and he had called out that, um, that maybe we vote based on the automation test results. That will force us to increase our automation coverage. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, we did not cover it, and it keeps coming and keeps coming, and then we keep, uh, keep extending the, the RC cycles. Right. So how do we go about it? I hope this is going to work now. OK. So we have to increase automation coverage. So we need lots of sponsors. Sponsors could be uh, now. With that also comes barrier to, uh, barrier to entry, because the way we are set up right now in, as, a, as a community is it's harder to add automation. And that's where Amok's presentation is something that we will carry forward is a replicable test infrastructure design, which anybody can replicate in their environment. Like Mike, you could take it to SolidFire. And uh, Dan, you could take it to Schuberg and, and, and work through it. Ilya, Ilya maybe we should, we should talk, connect on that as well. And add, add more automation, which means uh, making it simpler to add automation. There are a few presentations uh, that, that, that were in this collab, but this is something we continue have to work on. And uh, if you care or benefit from a specific feature, then you should actually help out. It's not just calling out, hey, this, this broke. Now you've got to fix this, otherwise you cannot ship this RC or ship this release. That is. Um, although everybody wants a good quality release, but we want that feedback sooner. And if you are benefiting in any way from cloud stack, it sort of is the onus is on, on you to add automation coverage to it. So I would say with RCs, if, if someone files a blocker defect, then either they have to come up with automation or they have to work in community to add automation for that particular scenario if it is missing. Otherwise, you will always have this problem of uh, regressions that we didn't know about, and we, we catch them later, right? There's, there's no way we, we, we can scale, right? Testing participation, we have to definitely increase, and this has to be more on a formal basis, like, hey, I'm going to sign up for testing this area. Otherwise, it's ad hoc, the feedback comes, and comes or does not come, and there is no, no loop back. And that means then we really don't know who's testing what. So once we have uh, a lot more uh, sign up like that, I think we will have a much more efficient cycle. Uh, code quality, increased code quality, that we definitely have to work on. And with the branch merge expectation that we worked on, I think, in 4.2, I think that has improved. But most of the challenges we have seen have not been in new features. Those are regressions. And this, those can be caught by, uh, only by automation. And then release management, thanks, Ilyas, on supporting me. <laughs> this is ref definitely not a one-person task. There are. Uh, we need a lot more people. Uh, we need more volunteers to help out. And then uh, release candidates, we need to increase participation. And my notes to future release manager, uh, you're not going to win popularity contest. You have to learn to say no, uh, because it's possible some feature is not going to make it. However important it is, we have, to some, we have to say no. Likewise, if someone has an issue, but if it's in his, in his or her siloed environment, and does not affect rest of the cloud stack code. There are folks waiting for the release, so you have to say no to them as well. And it has to come in the maintenance release or the next release. Un otherwise, we can't keep, keep re-spinning RCs. It's a full-time job. Uh, don't take criticism personally, because obviously it's not directed at, at you. Uh, someone is simply frustrated. And that's where we need help on the documentation side as well. 
and with Sebastian's uh, move to RST, I think we, we have enabled or lowered the barrier to add documentation, so that's definitely a good achievement out of, out of 4.3. And as a release manager, you have to recruit volunteers early on, and don't assume folks that were volunteering in the prior release will continue to do so. That was something I realized during RC. I had an expectation that the prior person who was publishing the test results would do so, <laughs> but I did not enlist again. So that is something we, we need to do. And uh, everyone is volunteering their time, so you, you have to account for that in your release cycle. And, and uh, maybe uh, learn meditation. That's gonna help you with multiple RCs. So uh, that's it, and these are the credits for images. Any questions? So uh, 4.4 is going to code freeze next week, right? That's correct. So that's, that's, the, that's the official uh, code freeze date. OK, and then um, the, the release, I mean, the, after that, how long? I, I I'll, 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 go, I'll go back to one yeah, of the graphs. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, you know, six months so, after. So this is, this is a photo that I, I want to just quickly share. Effect of RCs. This is, this is my office when I was doing all the different RCs, and Amog took a, <laughs> took a snapshot. These are all the cups for different RCs. Okay. Now coming back to that particular slide. Okay. So this is this is really. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for four three, how many months after the code freeze did it come out now? Uh, March. So so this was the feature freeze. Feature freeze. Okay. This is the code freeze. And this is the stabilization period, right? So, so code freeze is that is on uh, four eighteen. Dan? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's four eighteen, which is end of end of next week. And that's where we will have we will have some some challenges. But unlike feature freeze, it's not really a hard date. We we obviously want as as much fixes to be in, right? Unless they are going to destabilize. So we we have we have to. Some, somehow figure that because out. Because we're, we're looking at doing something, but uh, we, we won't be ready by that time. So I'm now I'm at 4.5. Which, we're so, so, so then you are not, then you don't care, uh, you are not bothered about code freeze, you're bothered about the feature freeze date. Feature freeze and then the proposal date, right? That's what I should worry about. That's correct. So feature freeze date for 4.5 is going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be 6, 8, uh, 7, 18, July 18th. And if we go by feature proposal of what we have right now, which is one month prior to that, that's going to be June 18th. Okay. Right? Okay. Any I know other? These, I know these things are on the, uh, where, where the dashboard or? The so uh, the wiki page. wiki page. The release wiki page has the list of dates. And the dashboard is talking about, it's pretty much what is happening in the release. The wiki page is a landing page. It shows you what. What is in the release? Where are all the features and docs? Where is the design docs and all those things? So until we get some stuff up into the code base, I mean, how do you distribute? Because we have a customer requirement. We need to uh, distribute uh, our plugin and with 4.3 based. So um, your, your plugin is based on? The 4.3. OK. Um, and then we need to, you know, customer deployment will start, I think, early June. Okay. So we try to figure out how do we package it and how to distribute it to the customer. Um, but if isn't uh, is your plugin already contributed to CloudStack? No, no, it's not. That's what I'm saying. So we're oh, that's to, that's. We had. A, okay. We are, are we importing this, this uh, uh, gateway thing along from four one one up to four three. Okay. We so we are on Git uh, Cloud. Mm -hmm. and there we okay. So, so, so then how do you deploy it in your customer? customer so that's what we're trying to figure out. What is the best okay. way to distribute it to so, them? So if it is based on 4.3, 4.3 is already out, right? So all, all your plugin dependencies and if it's been tested, you can pretty much, some, whoever is using it has to download CloudStack 4.3 right. first, okay. get it installed, and then download your plugin jar, put it in, uh, it in folders, and uh, I think we have maybe some changes to configuration files, and that's, that's it. But that's all you need to do. So 
I mean, we do have some, a few files that have had to be changed in the core code also. But has it been contributed to four? Not yet, no. Okay, then, then you have a challenge. Yeah, that, that's what we're trying to do. So, I mean, I'm, so, are there other people who are doing a similar thing? Uh -huh. I mean, there must be people who are actually so, distributing. But if, if you have a dependency in main cloud stack code, then it needs to be contributed into that release, otherwise it's not going to make it. So the challenge I, I see yours in your case would be, if the dependency is in cloud stack, uh, you have a dependency on cloud stack and you register, and cloud stack code base doesn't know about your plugin, then we have to figure out, figure out a different model where the, the plugin can dynamically register rather than a, than a static link, right? That is not, that is not something that uh, I, I think we will we'll have to enhance on. I mean, we're still trying to figure out how do we. But but make, maybe distribute that. Package okay. It and distribute. So so one way to get around that it's like uh, an old old Java trick would be to get the source code for 4.3, make changes to those specific files, recompile with all the other classes in class path, yeah. and rejar, and then. Then it becomes a customized version for that. Yes, system. but unless unless your changes are in in the main main cloud stack, there is no. I understand that. I mean, so I, I I know I know what you know. So basically, that's one of the options we are looking at now is to provide the diffs of the files that have changed and then provide a jar and then build it over there. So yeah. Those yeah. Guys, but but I think this is some uh, discussion that you should take back. Uh, which what is what does your plugin do? So we we'll we were adding a, a support for our uh, networking uh, our SDN solution. Okay. Nuage networks. Okay. We are adding that capability. Uh, Okay. To, uh, okay. So in in that case, the change to cloud stack should be fairly minimal. Maybe only a few yeah. different files. Exactly. Right? It's the very network minimal. Provider. It's, it's mo mo mostly enums and. Uh, okay. So so that is something I think we should take back as a uh, as a suggestion back to community and design our plugins such that yeah. the network provider now all those things are dynamically registered rather than ch trying to change the cloud stack core code. Exactly. Like I know Nicira. I, I see a link there, we don't know it. So we followed a similar thing, right? We went yeah. and did the same, same thing because it was done that okay. way. So, uh, yeah, but almost all the plugins that we had are, are have been really part of Cloud Stack, so it was not an issue. So, But I think it's an interesting use case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should be able to add a plugin without modifying. Without, without modifying. Yeah. Yeah. Without so modifying if you stuff. can, like, oh, it's not a plugin otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I, think, I think one of the challenges there is it's, it's very simple to externalize those changes into some XML or configuration file. And uh, it's, 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 it's trivial work, but we support multiple management servers. So either you have to put those configuration files in a shared location, or you put those changes into a DB. Basically, we have to design our plugin such that there's a plugin database. When a plugin loads up, it calls in certain API to add itself, and then it's, it's available across management servers. So the other challenge I see is that even if with 4.5, let's say we you know we give the proposal by mid June and then you know maybe a month, two months later, whatever time frame is, and then it takes about four to six months, four month minimum, or assuming I mean in this case the RC is so, like so, nine so, RCs. So think think of this here, right? So this was the feature proposal date. This is your feature freeze. That's October, November, November through March was the. Release right. So this time we we took took a lot longer, and that's what I was I was talking no. about in this. I understand, but, but there's, we, there's, there's we a chance that could happen. The same thing. It's possible. Happen. It's possible. In theory, it should be every four months. Yeah. We're focusing on quality, so yeah, we, we will take. No, and we would be we, we would be doing all the testing internally because we're going to be shipping it to customers. We will be actually testing a lot of that before we actually push it out. Now it's a matter of you know for future changes that we're making. You know, we would rather they go through. Uh, released code. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plans, right? that, would, that, that would be our goal. Yeah, and, and I think there is also this notion in our minds that if master is open for a long time, we will have a lot more things come in. But practically, I think you, uh, Mike, you had also called out, mm -hmm. uh, for, even though the, fee, the release branch has been cut uh, and the master is open for next release, but most of the fixes that are going in master are not new features. They are they are pretty much bug fixes we have to port back into master, right? So even though the master was open for, let's say, four months between release cycle, practically it's like two, two months or two months worth of feature development. So keeping it longer but pulling in 
feature proposal date, I think accommodates what accommodates the reality, right? We can be very uh, say we have to stick to the so schedule, but really, really we can. So we have to adapt to adapt to where we are. So the branch gets cut at feature feature freeze. Feature okay. freeze. Okay. It will get cut here. Let let me go to another page. This page. So feature freeze at feature freeze the branch gets cut. Okay. Do we have any plans for like release managers sort of auditing? changes that go in after feature freeze. I, I've noticed we've had issues in 4.4 where things have been broken. Uh, so, 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 so that is actually easy and that's what I have set up a filter for. Okay. So the way to do that is set up a Jira query to say that any new feature, uh, feature tickets getting created, targeted for this release after the feature freeze date, pop it out. Yeah. That's, that, that's a simple widget to create. Yeah. I know we had a big issue, it seemed like this very week. Where, it? Um, with Zen server related code where we couldn't even like run the code base and it was like weeks and weeks after code, after feature freeze. Which but it, it might have been regression because of something else. No, nah, it, was, it was a change in the uh, Zen server API, uh, pulling out custom. I think what Mike means is uh, uh, oh, the guard uh, code base, we cannot get that from Jira. Yeah, it's actually oh, a code okay. base. Like, okay. It seems like it's been Yeah, because I, yeah, it needs to be a, a feature proposal. Exactly. And I just noticed, uh, I was trying to go back to the code base, seeing like, well, what, what broke this? Mm -hmm. And then you, you can kind of see based on the comments, like, this feature is added, has nothing to do with anything that was, you know, proposed, same thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, if that's part of release management's um, it's, it's 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 really hard for release manager to go through all the comments. I know. I so know uh, I was called out to not do cherry pick uh, start doing cherry pick right after code freeze, but it's practically impossible. Even during RCs, we have <laughs> so so many fixes were coming in. Yeah, and so I know it's, 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 it's not practical. It's impractical for it's impractical. one person to do that. Yeah. Maybe we just need to make that a more clear uh, Thank you. piece of yeah. information. Yeah. Any other questions? Are you here? Yeah. I think you mentioned this. Uh, so you're sharing your Jira filters? Yeah, yeah, it's already in the, in the it's, it's, it's all public. Uh, 4.2 dashboard and 4.3 dashboard, they're pretty much. So all I need is to that dashboard then. Yes, Every yes, time. yes. I, had, I, had, I was actually, every week I used to send out my update. I had a link to the dashboard. I was hoping folks will go there. <laughs> but looks like it's not popular yet. So that is something Hugo and Dan, hopefully you can make it more popular. So is this, uh, the David's proposal? Was it formalized? I don't think so. I'm sorry? The, David's proposal to uh, not allow blockers unless there was an automated test provided? So, no, no David's, David's proposal was slightly different. David's proposal was that the voting on RC is based on automation, irrespective of all the other fixes, all the bugs that are coming in. That forces us to make sure that we have good automation coverage. But the consequence is that if someone signals a blocker, it must provide an automation, an automated test that's to correct. actually be able to mark it. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Um, do you have an idea of the uh, number of hours per week that we're working as a release manager for, let's say, for a So, do you have an idea? I was, uh, so it's, it's, it's actually more than a full-time job. So I was doing this plus obviously my, my dollar day job. <laughs> Okay, so you, you yeah, if, if, the, if, if, if you look at it, uh, it, it really ramps up, uh, like setting up dashboards and all that doesn't take much time once you, once you know it. Uh, from feature freeze all the way until, until you GA, that's, that's really the time for release manager. He has to, uh, like, like for example, like I mentioned, right, since we do not have auto assignment and uh, you pretty much have to triage every issue and figure out, hey, look at the exception trace and figure out which component it is. I know this guy worked in this or look at the git repo, look for that particular class and see who, or do a git blame and see who, who has changed it. Send them an email and figure out, hey, can you really fix it? So that, that takes a lot of time. But if we have a comprehensive list of components, subcomponent, and if we agree to have people 
be owners of that, maybe we rotate those owners and do auto assignment. That work will reduce quite a bit. But that means everybody has to take a responsibility for that particular component and be ready to fix issues in that area. That way it gets delegated. That's really the time all the way from feature, uh, feature freeze to RC. It's pretty much all the time goes in looking at every defect and uh, every defect and figuring out who, whom should fix it. How about putting uh, responsibility by, uh, at the uh, report? I'm sorry? Putting the responsibility of having a bug assigned at the report. No, no, so that has to be done through auto assignment. Git, actually Jira supports it, but as community we decided not to use it because uh, there was a long thread on, uh, during 4.2, it was really challenging for me because I could not even manually assign. Because <laughs> it's like, you're giving somebody work and this is an open source community, everybody should be able to figure out what they want to pick, but how do I run a release with that, right? So I, I, I called out, hey, this is like 2,000 bucks, how am I supposed to <laughs> work through it? So I was told, okay, now you can assign. But even with assignment, you have to do git blame and see who, who, who made the change to that area or look at the component list, and that takes a lot of time. So we have to do, like, I, I would say we should do auto assignment. <coughs>